Over to you, Trudy. Thank you, Stefan, and thank you, our distinguished rapporteurs who really um, gave us feedback and nuggets from the various sessions. We now go into our closing session, and we have two speakers for this segment. It's my pleasure to welcome up Dr. Jun Chung Kim, who's the president of the Korea Development Institute, KDI, the Republic of Korea, to make his closing remarks. A warm welcome, sir. It is a great uh, pleasure, indeed honor, uh, to be here for this important and timely event. I first want to start by thanking our host and co-organizers, the World Bank and Korean Ministry of Finance and Strategy, for their steadfast cooperation and commitment to knowledge sharing and development effectiveness. I would like to especially thank Executive Director Hinam Che and Abba Joshi Gani, Director of LLI, and this team for their strong support and hard work in making this event happen. The Korean government and the KDI have been working with the World Bank together for a long time through many ups and downs, first as recipients of World Bank assistance and now development collaborators. We look forward to continuing to build on our achievements and to expand our partnership and to share our knowledge and experience with the rest of the world. As a policy-oriented research institute and knowledge-sharing organization that researches development and works with policymakers in Korea and around the world, I know firsthand the importance of knowledge-sharing and capacity building. For me and institutions like KDI that facilitate knowledge-sharing, the high-level meeting offers a great opportunity to hear about the experiences, challenges, and opportunities in knowledge sharing from a wide range of stakeholders. Really, I learned a lot from this meeting. The biggest lesson from Korea's own experience, which is also the biggest challenge in development or policy making right now is figuring out how to go from policy ideas to results. In other words, we know what to do. We just don't know how to do it. Thomas Edison once said, genius is 1% inspiration and 99% uh, perspiration. <laughs> In the same way, I believe the development policy making process is 1% planning and 99% implementation. Implementation matters. I firmly believe that knowledge sharing has a critical role to play in filling the knowledge gap between knowing what to do and how to do it. Hearing education minister yesterday, education minister Elvira Sereva of Kyrgyzstan Republic's experience of applying policy lessons from the knowledge supermarket made meaningful contributions in her country's efforts to expand access to education tells me that knowledge sharing can make a difference. It also tells me that the knowledge must be relevant and context specific. 
I firmly believe it is important to capture and share uh, practical and adaptable lessons based upon concrete experiences that countries can use to produce better development results. That is I, what, uh, why I believe case studies Case studies, a proven method of teaching practitioners. Case studies can play a critical role in offering important lessons, insights, and inspiration on the policy implementation process. Giving the textbook answer to development and policy questions is no longer enough. We must give practitioners and policymakers know-how to implement policies and to solve real-world problems. One of the important discussions I heard during session two yesterday was about the challenge and opportunity we face in capturing and sharing institutional memory or tacit knowledge. While it is difficult to define what is tacit knowledge and is also difficult to know how we can share it. I, I believe that this kind of knowledge is, is about values, practices, and culture that are promoted by organizations and the people. Do you promote problem solving? Is failure seen as a learning opportunity? Do you encourage inquiry and learning by asking questions? Do you value collaboration and sharing? In discussing the importance of a tacit knowledge, I want to emphasize the quote shared by the keynote speaker yesterday that culture eats strategy for breakfast. Many of the reforms and policies implemented early in Korea's development laid the foundation for Korea's rapid social and economic transformation. These reforms and policies were successfully implemented because of the efforts to promote and institute a new way of doing things in the government, such as promoting good governance and monitoring and evaluation, and indeed robust monitoring and evaluation during the implementation process. These new values and cultures were institutionalized through informal education and training in the public sector. As an economist, I firmly believe incentives matter. As Korea's experience shows, setting the clear and measurable targets and having an incentive scheme to meet these targets are very important. But it is also important to think about what kind of a culture or values can and should be promoted to help make policies and reforms more sustainable. I also heard great discussions during session four yesterday about the challenge of being able to measure and evaluate the impact of knowledge sharing. How do we know knowledge sharing is working and producing desired outcomes? One of the main factors why Korea was able to achieve rapid social economic transformation was that Korea benefited greatly from technical assistance from the donor countries. A large number of policymakers and government workers early in Korea's development 
in the 1950s and in the 1960s, Korean government public employees participated in capacity building programs and were educated and trained in US academic institutions such as Vanderbilt, Syracuse, and the Minnesota University, as well as the multilateral institutions like the World Bank and IMF. Between 1954 and 1962, over 2,000 participants were trained in the United States. These early pioneers of Korea's development formed the basis of a capable government the World Bank's EDI trained a number of uh, policymakers who would eventually hold high level of government positions. For instance, the first training at EDI in 1956, Mr. Song In Sang, he passed away last year. He later became the Minister of Finance. And many trainees of, at the Vanderbilt University that later played critically important in making five-year economic development plan very effectively and became the Minister of Finance and uh, Deputy Prime Minister and the uh, Minister of uh, Economic Planning Board, etc. KDI was established with United States aid, US aid. My institute was funded by US aid. And many of our economists in the early years, in the 1970s, were trained overseas through capacity building programs. KDI was able to build its knowledge base and research capacity collaborating with leading institutions such as the World Bank, IMF, and Harvard University, and Brookings Institute. I'm proud to say that KDI and the Korean government are continuing this tradition of promoting international development cooperation and capacity building programs to train and produce the leaders and reformers of tomorrow. Just recently, one of our graduates of KDI School, the KDI School of Public Policy and Management, our graduates, alumni, became a government minister in Ethiopia, minister of construction, one month ago. I think this is the hard evidence I can show that knowledge sharing can produce meaningful outcomes. I would like to close by thanking the World Bank and the Korean Ministry of Finance and Strategy and all the participants for providing this tremendous opportunity to be part of the dialogue and to learn more about ways we can capture and deliver the kinds of knowledge that can help countries deliver outcomes. Thank you so much for your attention. Thank you very much, Dr. Kim. And now we will welcome up Abba Joshi Ghani, who is acting uh, vice president of the Leadership, Learning, and Innovation Unit here at the bank to make her remarks. Thank you. And good afternoon, everybody. Um, Dr. Kim, President KDI, Your Excellencies, honored and distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, uh, colleagues, uh, it's a great honor to join you for this closing session. I think we've come to an end of two really remarkable days, and, and I am impressed by how you have all sustained not just your intellectual curiosity and your passion for knowledge and learning, uh, but also that energy. I, I still feel that in the room, and that's, that's quite something to say. And there's also been an amazing amount of buzz around the bank yesterday and today. And I think what it does is that it really takes this whole 
area of knowledge, knowledge sharing of what we're doing in the countries, of what you are doing in your institutions in your countries, and how the World Bank and other partners like KDI and GIZ are all collaborating. It just takes it and gives it an amazing amount of visibility, which is so, so important, because we always think of knowledge as out there, as embedded, that it happens automatically, and, and, and it, would, it would just occur. But it does not, as we've learned over these last two days. Um, I think the sessions um, from today were very wonderfully summarized by all the rapporteurs and, and the amazing knowledge nuggets that we got to take away since we were not able to all attend those sessions. And I also wanted to thank Martin Rama for giving his comments and his reflections uh, on those. So it's really, really heartening to, to see all of you. I also understand, and I have been uh, advised by the organizers, that there is a cocktail hour after this and some dinner, so I shouldn't talk too much. So I'll, I'll keep to that. But I also wanted to actually just say, um, you know, summarize uh, four common themes that have come up over the last two days. Um, first, that knowledge sharing is a driver of global development, that it's not finance alone. It is knowledge and learning and eventually innovation, which actually accelerates development. And these two days, we've celebrated uh, knowledge sharing as a driver of global development. And that for this knowledge sharing and learning to thrive, it will need to be supported by sound policies and enabling environment, both at the country level and at the international level, because we're not only talking about domestic knowledge sharing and learning and scaling up, but internationally, how do we share knowledge and learn? How do we contextualize that? Second, there's much to learn about knowledge sharing, and we continue to need platforms that allow for knowledge sharing tools, approaches, and solutions to be shared and discussed. And I do believe that we have a global knowledge sharing platform that we have put together. And I think that each one of us in our own countries can create that platform to take this domestic knowledge sharing forward. Thirdly, we need to implement both just in time we need knowledge now, we need solutions now that we can then adapt, contextualize, and use. Um, but we also need programmatic knowledge learning, something which is multi-year, which is, you know, um, over the years, which uh, we, we learn slowly, we reflect, and we learn. So both just in time and programmatic. Um, and we need to, uh, and this would actually require for all of us to be prepared to anchor them firmly for in results chains and to use a broad palette of tools to get to adaptation and replication of solutions. And I think that adaptation and replication is really important. And last but not the least, we need to further help country institutions strengthen their capacity for systematic knowledge capturing and sharing. And as one of the panelists mentioned yesterday, this is all about three things, people, people, and people. And as we strive to meet the ambitious targets of the, so, uh, of the SDGs and the agenda of, for 2030, country institutions and their staff will need to be well equipped to make most of those local solutions and to bring them to scale. That's the only way that we can achieve the SDGs in 2030. And so these are the frontier tasks and the examples that we've heard throughout the last two days. And these are both encouraging and inspiring. And I think the four words that I, if I keep in the tradition of what are the four words that I take away, I would say that what is important in knowledge sharing is that uh, convening, connecting, co-creating, and contextualizing. And I think that's, that's really, really important. And as Kyle Peters, our Senior Vice President for Operations, mentioned yesterday, knowledge sharing is not only nice to have. It's not something that you have on the side, but that is actually it's an imperative. It's absolutely essential if we want to reach a world free of poverty and increase shared prosperity. And I think that is a goal that we all share here. And I can't think of a way how this vision can become a reality if we were not all of us contributing to identifying, documenting, and learning from solutions that peers have come up with in any corner of the world and then scaling those up. And the bank 
as one of the many organizations working on knowledge sharing, will further have to invest in its tools and approaches and more firmly embed the development of knowledge sharing capacity throughout its operations portfolio. And this is something that we are focusing within our institution to how do we capture our tacit knowledge from operations and then use it, adapt it to find solutions in other countries and similar operations or different sectors. So we are all constantly searching for that same solution of uh, finding tacit knowledge and actually using it, adapting it, and using it to scale up solutions and scale up development. And we've committed to our shareholders to this agenda of knowledge sharing in IDA 17. And this event is a testimony that yes, we are committed to it and we are on track. And I know that this is going to be a very important agenda for our next round of IDA 18 as well. But as you know, no institution can do this alone. And we all need to partner up to make knowledge sharing happen and build local capacities. And in that context, I can only highlight how Korea continues to be a critical partner on this work. I walked by the booth of KDI um, and Korea in the atrium, and I was just amazed to see how well they've documented their knowledge sharing program, the, the number of people who were there who wanted to see what they're doing. And I think specifically how well the KDI has put together its knowledge activities and, and its knowledge sharing program. Uh, I also remember just a couple of months ago, uh, Dr. Kim, when you were here to talk about Korea's experience of development. And Dr. Kim at that time talked about how Korea invested in, in skill building and governance in the public sector. And that was the core of Korea's development program. But I think what came out of there, and, and you mentioned today, was uh, the culture, the value that we create in order to actually take that leap of development. And, you know, and Korea really is an amazing example for all of us to see and follow and to learn from. So, you know, it is, it is really an, a, a very, very valuable and deep partnership that we have with KDI, with other Korean institutions and with Korea itself. So we've come to the end of this official program of HLM3 and I declare this closed, which means that now you can actually share knowledge informally and talk and chat. And I just want to thank you all again very, very, very much for making, firstly, this long trip here, for sharing your knowledge, sharing your, your intuitive um, sense of what works and what doesn't work, and being so very generous with it. And I'll be remiss if I did not thank the organizing team Stefan, Twitty, everybody else who's here, who's really worked hard for the last three months to get this together. I know it looks wonderfully seamless and effortless, um, but I think that's the magic of really good um, teamwork. So I'd like to thank the team for organizing this. Thank you all very much. I will not keep you long. I know we are all very eager to make our way to the atrium, um, to have fun. You know, you've worked so hard the last two days. It's time to have some fun and to unwind. And I just have a few announcements to make uh, before we make our way there. We have available for each of us to pick up at the door the communique on, of the third high-level meeting on country-led knowledge sharing. So please, kindly, as you leave, you can see uh, dedicated team at the doors ready to give you a copy. Please be sure to pick up one before you leave. Um, secondly, you will also find on this side, um, if you exit from this side, you will also find the different airport schedules for tomorrow. Please pick the one that is for the hotel that you're staying in. So the airport shuttle schedules are available, but they, I believe, to the left of the, um, the right side of the globe um, that is outside of the lobby. Please be sure you've picked the right schedule for the hotel that you are staying in. If you have any translation devices with you, please could you drop them off at the door. They will not work beyond this venue. And finally, Please, as we make our way back to the atrium, 
be sure that you stay for a while because you will be hearing the announcement of the winning team for the contest, the poster contest, and I hope you voted. I hope you voted. We'll be having the announcement and presentation for the group that was nominated or voted as winner for the winning poster. That just might be you. So it, on behalf of a very dedicated team that has worked tirelessly behind the scenes, and some have told me not to name them, but they will be named at the reception. We really thank you very much for your presence, your engagement. You have been an amazing audience to be with and to interact with for the past two days. We wish you safe onward travels back to your homes. And many thanks, and God bless you. Please, let's make our way. So let's make our way to the atrium for fun, food, and a live band. <laughs> 